and that nom nom and, and then uh the uh the guys i'm working with now like two of them actually did fly in nom those dudes are old yes back in back in nom <laughs> yeah. if, if anybody ever talks about nom you should just say well in korea we did well. <laughs> not to these guys <laughs> all right are we ready eh, close punched enough. in the face mental's hold <laughs> got problems with the plumbing what else do we need to know oh hold on my music yep. switched to the wrong theme all right everyone welcome to everyone racers a show designed for the world of low dollar racing and oddball car culture it doesn't matter what kind of lemma champ or lucky track dog league you run scc or nasa we won't discriminate as long as you drive it hard and built it yourself join us each week for tech discussion tips tricks news and notes in the world of amateur endurance racing and whether it's on the spot hella sweet or we're lucky enough and chrissy gives us just a tip we're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone report to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. I'm Jeff. And I'm Mental. And we are Everyone Racers. Thanks so much for coming back and listening to a Benetton episode of our podcast. The Benetton B192 was uh, the Formula One team's entry for the 1992 F1 season, Michael Schumacher's first full season ride, and it allowed him to finish third in the Drivers' Championship. Benetton themselves would finish third in the Constructors' Championship. What's interesting about that is Schumacher finished ahead of Art and Senna, the reigning world champion at the time. So if you're not oh, driving wow. your points-winning F1 car, or for that matter, any car, Grab that brand spanking new updated E1R bingo card. Uh, somebody who, who's uh, didn't somebody put in the Slack channel they got bingo last week? Somebody got bingo. It was my brother. Your brother. Your brother got bingo. There it is. And uh, and so we'll transition from the bingo card to, as we so often do with what you're working on. And I see lots of double entendres about sand in the whale. There's, there's no double entendres. It's sand in the boat we just spelled it out how you're supposed to uh -huh. say it. Um, actually saturday i painted the boat this time spray instead of roll and tip i got myself a, <laughs> roll a better the tip yep i got myself a better gun at uh, eastwood so much more fun on sale. Huh? <laughs> the old gun wasn't good enough uh -uh. i got a better gun for the tip Actually, really, I did because the tip size was different. I needed a tip size of 1.1 to 1.3, apparently, per the manufacturer when I talked uh, to the tech rep. 1.3. Yep. It's like not even funny that you said. That's nope. like 0. 0.2 larger, funny. and that matters. Yeah. Yeah. And the gun I had was a 1.5 tip. So I needed a smaller tip on the gun to paint this stuff. And I did. And I have to say, this is much better than rolling and tipping. It goes so much faster, especially in uneven areas. Uh, I did make some runs when I started off because I'm you know, getting used to the, it, the whole thing. And uh, as I was st really starting, like in coat one, the wind really picked up, which is a real shame when you're spray painting anything. And it's a lot of pollen around. So I ended up making like a, a wind block out of a tarp attached to the house and to some trees and held down with scooty and a battery on the bottom. Like, it, I'm sure it looked fabulous as you drove up the road. I'm like, what are you doing back there? Um, but <laughs> I feel, like, I feel like there's just this thing where the wind comes up and he goes, huh, what would Jeff for mental do in this situation? I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey. Jeff would just it, let the shit fall into the paint. I mean. That's true. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. I've actually uh, never painted a car that I cared about. Yeah. So we're now in the process of wet sanding out all of that stuff. All of the pollen and stuff and runs and whatnot that i put in it um we are sanding all that out and then so this is you basically it's many coats of wet sanding depending like the, the runs get 600 and then a thousand then 1500 then 2000 those parts that are good just get 1500 then 2000 and then once all the sanding is done then it's buffing time we get three different layers of buffing with various aggressive and less aggressive <laughs> compounds and <laughs> he said yep. time uh, buff <laughs> Anyway, that's what we're doing. Uh, the power went out today while we were uh, 
actually at the end of my work day. So we were happy to have a scenario B available of because we have sump pumps that we use that actually so work more than people should. Yeah. <laughs> we're like, yeah. switch to scenario B. And then we make yep. up like different things. And then I say, which one is that? Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, what's his face got in the car? I didn't know. Yep. <sighs> then we grab the generator out of the trailer, some extension cords, got the sump pumps going again. Yeah, all is well. Nice. It's nice to be emergency prepared. What caused your power outage? Or does it matter? I'm sorry. Uh, a thunderstorm. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, they get those up there. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Like big it's ones today. Pretty like, much it... what's going on. It's coming here. Yep. Are you, you in between stages? You have one already? No, we have you... not had one yet. Oh, no, it came really two. close. And then it didn't. Mm. We heard some thunder, but then it didn't rain. Oh, then you're probably just going to get the next one. The next yeah. one just came through. So you'll be probably getting it while yep. you're on here. This is good listener stuff. Jeff, what are you working on? Uh, <clears throat> so I had to take my son to scout college, which was like camp for a day to do merit badges. And then we went to a friend's house and we had swim test, which, uh, is the, the, the code for all the kids get to have a pool party. So it was really weird. This is my first like post vaccination, like social event with other maskless adults. And it was a lot of, do you get the vet? Did you get the vet? Okay. I know we don't do political on this show, but I'm going to make this joke anyway. It's a real easy way to find out if someone's been vaccinated and they're not wearing a mask. Ask them who won the election. Yeah, absolutely. I was surrounded by a lot of doctors and things, and they were all like, uh, yeah. So it was, it was pretty good. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I mentioned last week that I polished the headlights on the Mazda 3. And then my father goes, oh, uh, I can't see either. You need to polish the headlights on my car. So I had to get his car and polish his headlights. It's not the coat of filth on the windshield. It's the headlights. Uh, it's pretty bad. And you all saw the video. I'm not going to post that video for public consumption. <laughs> but my father's car is disgusting. Like it is. We knew this. It is way grosser than even I can handle. I'm just saying. Um, so, but I did clean the hell out of my three and I did this for a very specific reason because at scout college, I talked to one of our youths about learning how to drive stick. And I made a, made an appointment and he, he, on Saturday morning or Sunday morning, we went out and I taught a 16 year old, by the way, a 16 year old in the state of New Jersey does not yet have his driver's license. And I taught him to drive. Because he is currently fixing a C5 Corvette for his first car with his father. And his father has no other cars with a stick and could not teach him. So he That's is awesome. Yeah. And the, the car, it's all part. So he like can't, even though he has his learner's permit, his father can't take him out and do his fatherly duty of teaching him the church of the third pedal. So I said, look, the Mazda 3 is going soon. And I'm not going to be teaching no wayward youths on the new car. So I, I asked around. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, t- two hours. C- C5 Corvette is a pretty bold choice for a first car. For yes. Not New Jersey. Not New Jersey at all. If he's already got the tank tops and the gold chains, it's going to be fine. Yeah. I'm just hoping the fact that he has a lot of sweat equity in it is going to mean he's going to make some slightly more edited, more quality decisions. Wait, when did the C5 things. start? Was the first year of the C5? 97. Mm-hmm. 97. Might have been a C4. No, I can't remember totally, exactly. In which case, he's safer than that than he is in a new yeah. Honda minivan. Yeah, probably. Well, I don't know about safe, but uh, yeah. So anyway, so he is, uh, he, he was, it was fun. Uh, it was about an hour in a parking lot and then about 20, 30 minutes on the street. And then he drove me home. So I would consider that a success. No stalling. One stall. Um, his father was in the back seat, and his father was doing pretty well about staying out of it. Seriously, and what pressure! At, at one point, he came. The only time he stalled is he was coming up to a green light, and we all kind of suggested, "Why don't you use second to make this left-hand turn?" And he came to a complete stop for no reason. Like he could have rolled through the left, but we told him to go into second. So he kept it in second and, you know, 
Like, I think if we didn't shout that, he would have put it into neutral, come Just, to a complete stop, yeah. and then put it in first and gone. So Overloaded so that, mm-hmm. yeah, he was like, yeah. what, wait, all right, I'm going to stop this input and then process that input, and that involves a car not moving. And there's, yeah. a, there's a lot of, of that learning. That you're, in addition to stalling, there's a lot of that. Which gear am I in? Depends on yeah. the car. Where am I going? So exactly that's great that's fantastic um yeah i i was going to do stuff on the on on the 300z but that's when my father said he wanted his headlights done so i did fix the wing because the wing had fallen off and then i drilled it and like put bolts that went all the way through the wing so now it will stay on like real bolts off from all of the speed and power (laughs) all of the times jeff has been opening the trunk with it in the last couple of weeks because i keep opening it uh i've ordered all the parts so all the parts uh should be in by the weekend not including the lugs the extended lugs so uh this weekend i think jim and i will have most of it done well and you never told us the the what happened when you talked to the power steering fitting people? Oh, okay. I can talk to you about the power steering, steering fitting people. So um, turn, uh, turn One is the name of the company. Um, it is a fantastic company that has all kinds of power steering fittings. I think you sent me the link to it, right, Chris? Um, I, think I, I think I did, yes. Um, yes. <clears throat> so I emailed them. It about... looked like the right part. It was a restrictor, but it also was long and skinny enough to get past our Corvette pulley and still be able to put the end fitting on the end and not hit anything. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I had a conversation with one of their guys. I'm sorry. I can't remember his name. I think it was Mark. Um, And he talked a lot about like, so what are you doing and what's this and what's that? And I told him that uh, basically we were venting out of the cap and we blew a line and we need a restrictor and we do this and we do this. And he was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Restrictors (laughs) only do one thing. So all of those things that you're talking about, it is not going to fix. And he talked to me about how to fix all the other stuff. So venting out of the cap is not helped by the restrictor. Cooling is the only thing that keeps it venting from the cap. And the cap is supposed to vent if it gets hot. So you're just going to have to live with it if you're overheating the power steering. Hmm. The restrictor restricts flow, not pressure. So it will still deliver the same amount of pressure, just not as much. So it's, a, it's an interesting concept. Basically, the only thing the restrictor, by the way, we're talking about a Chevy power steering pump that is going into the Nissan rack for the Nissan 300Z. And he basically said, if the steering is way too light, that is what a restrictor will fix. I'm sorry, Chris, you're muted. You're still muted. You're still muted. I said it's pretty light. The steering it's pretty light. car. Yeah. yeah. So I ordered the restrictor. Um, and then basically he said, cooling is your key. I told him about the cooling, little cooling thing that we stuck in there, the cooler. Um, and I'm probably going to you know, rearrange it and try and get it up front. Um, but he also said synthetic fluid is your friend, the best synthetic fluid. He gave a couple of fluid recommendations. Uh, turn one steering cannot suggest them high enough. He also said, well, if you know, if you really need it, we can rebuild that pump so it does different things. And uh, uh, we're not there, dude. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was, that was but some, we're not not there. We're not we're, not we're there, not, but that is cubic yet. dollars yeah. we're not ready to spend at the moment. Yeah, that's, that's that's actually really great stuff. Turn one will be linked in our show notes. Oh, thank you. Well, thanks. Thanks cool. for the update. I've been yeah. wondering about that. Yeah. Chrissy, Great. cool. What are you doing? Um, I, on Saturday, I ran a Girl Scout event in a field, and it was ninety plus degrees with a little bit of breeze, so it was really hot. But I think everybody had a good time, so that's good. Um, uh, we had a quick beach trip on Sunday, and then I have been helping sanding the boat, and we were going to do it tonight. And there have been storms rolling through, so we took tonight off. Back to work tomorrow. All fun here. Mental. What you up to? So I had in my uh, in the the show notes here that I was working on plumbing. I you, you, the way too much background on this, but it just talks about how project creep is not unique to cars. On last on on Sunday, Vicky noticed that our faucet had gotten wobbly, and it's a bolt underneath that tightens uh, up the faucet. faucet. 
to properly get underneath there, I disconnected the two lines from the water inputs and then tightened the faucet so it wasn't wobbly. And then when I reattached the, the faucets onto the cold water and the hot water, the hot water side would neither completely turn off or completely turn on with the 45 degree dual outlet valve. So Monday, I went to Home Depot and got a new dual outlet stainless steel valve, which I then placed on. Monday night, I come home or uh, Tuesday or Tuesday, I come home from work and Vicky's got a pan underneath it. She goes, yeah, it's been leaking. I thought you knew. So I spent literally the entire night, Tuesday night, taking off, putting back on, taking off, putting back on, taking off, putting back on this dual outlet valve at six in the morning. I finally got all back together and it stopped leaking. I turned on the faucet, no water pressure. And at this point, I have been up for 36 hours. And uh, I look at Vicky and go, I quit, call a plumber. I have exhausted. And really, when you're working on plumbing at three o'clock in the morning, you're not really working on plumbing at three o'clock in the morning. You're learning about plumbing at three o'clock in the morning. And that's exactly what I was doing. So she called a wonderful local outfit. They came out here today and goes, oh, yeah, no, he did everything right. Your faucet's broken which was the conversation Chris and Chrissy were. Yeah, it just turns out the faucet was garbage. So I'm furious but relieved that I'm not actually completely useless when it comes to home repair. Which on that note, I've also been working on the roof. My house is now much like Sasha Centra, 30% more. I've actually only got one more rubber section to glue down. And then I've got to start doing the 80% of the labor to get the last 20% of the roof covered in that. Last night, I had the absolute joy of going to the premiere, even though it's already on Pluto On Demand. If you have a smart TV, go to Pluto TV and then go to their On Demand section. And uh, way, way down, like five pages down is a Cars subheading. And it's called Porsche Road Trip. It's a six-episode series with uh, John Polinick, who's based here in Las Vegas. Uh, he invited Vicky and I to that. It was fantastic. I posted pictures on her Instagram. A lot of fun, a lot of, you know, old car nerds and people who actually weren't car nerds that suddenly got pulled into the car hobby. What you got, Jeff? He invited you. You know him? Yeah, we're friends. I love his YouTube show, Bid Nerds. Yeah, I was on it. You were on it? When the hell were you Brief, on very, it? Very briefly. It was like uh, two months ago. I was watching it on my phone at work and he sees me watching. He goes, hey, we're going to bring my buddy Mental Ward in here. And yeah, so I popped in there for a couple of minutes to talk this about This is my new obsession. It's for those a of you great who don't know, show. Can I- can I explain yeah. it real quick? Go for so it. So two guys literally every day talk about four or five cool cars that are up for auction currently on the major bid sites. And then they review the car, the cars that they did yesterday. Uh, and they know more stuff about Porsches than anybody in the world. Yeah. They were John is arguing. A great guy. <laughs> yeah. John, Michael Deeb is the other guy. They were yeah. arguing the other day about whether something was or wasn't an available option in 1976 and they had to go to the green book. And it turns out one guy was right. I don't remember. I think Michael was right. And John was wrong, but it was like, they literally sit there and go, they, they are friends with like Bradley and the guys who run, mm-hmm. um, who run a um, rad for sale. Thank you. Rad for sale. And they are like, these pictures are terrible. They have no problem like saying this car is worth $20,000 more and it's the fault of the website for allowing them to submit these crappy pictures. Yeah, it's fantastic. Absolutely. You got to yeah. watch it. He's a filmmaker uh, yeah. by trade. And if, and, and he told me, I was like, when, when the first time I met him, I met him through Cameron, the other half of the Camden tub podcast. Yeah, we yeah. were both going to go check out a Mustang for cam that he found on a, a website here in Las Vegas. And then, yeah, we hung out, did some coffee. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm working on this show with Adam Carolla. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. And then he sent me the link to the show. And if you haven't watched the show, he completely buried the lead. He's buddies with Sir Mix-a-Lot. He is buddies with Sir Mix-a-Lot. And and yes, Sir Mix-a-Lot is known for the the butt song, which is a great song. But Sir Mix-a-Lot is like the original OG hardcore car guy. Absolutely. I remember when I was in high school, he wrote a letter to the editor of Car and Driver, and he was uh, calling him out about something. And he said, look, that's not a unique vehicle. It's not a Bizzarini. And I remember I had to go to my big green encyclopedia of cars and look up what a Bizzarini was. By the way, it's a, it's a handmade race car from the 60s. It's a, they're beautiful. They're gorgeous. Anyway, 
So I did that. Uh, tomorrow I leave for Thunder Hill. Tomorrow evening I leave for Thunder Hill. I'll be judging Thunder Hill this weekend. It is going to be hot and fun, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. And tomorrow during the day is my going away. So I, I have a golf tournament for me and a few other people from my old units going away. And then are so. you done? Like you don't have to go there for work anymore? Or I don't have just- to go there. For, I don't have to go there for work now. I go to another place for work. Hence this. Uh, what you can't see on the radio it's, is me mocking my I'm 12 years old and I didn't shave for a year beard that I've got going on here. My Ashton Kircher on a bender beard that I'm now growing because I just hate shaving. But yeah, uh, it, we'll post actually one of my favorite ads for bid nerds is uh, John Polonix got a really he's got a shotgun and it's his car and he points it at his Porsche and he goes, if you don't watch bid nerds, I'm going to shoot this 997. And then he turns the camera, it's a new cut, and he goes, and if you immediately said, that's not a 997, that's a 996, well, then this show's for you, because that's exactly what I did when I saw that. (laughs) So, yeah, enough of us hyping that. This is news. Turn turn to our regular, yeah, we turn to our Corvette expert. Right after the show, I'll be telling Mental, yo, book that guy for our show. Chevy Corvette production is shut down once again this week until June. It is currently like the middle of May. Uh, Lewin Day at The Drive tells us that ongoing parts shortages that are currently plaguing, you know, every single car plant that's happening, uh, that's trying to build, um, but is also keeping the Bowling Green Kentucky factory from meeting the demand of the new mid-engined Corvette. For those of you keeping score, this is the seventh time that part issues have halted the line since production started in 2021 for the 2021 model year, making it wor- making it worse is the fact that the new Corvette was the fastest selling car in March. Lewin expands with the data that the C8 Corvettes are spending just 13.1 days on a dealer lot before being sold, which is over three times quicker than the 49 days that was averaged by most other new cars. Uh, show, show notes will have the drive story. Wow. <laughs> you have to wait for your Corvette a little longer. Look, the, the we've talked about it already. The halts in production is causing a spike in all car prices. So, yep. and lots of other problems. And lots, lots of, of lots problems. of other problems. Yes. Okay. Uh, last week, told we told you Las Vegas-based racer Michelle Abate uh, was making her NASCAR debut at the Circus, Circuit of Americas this past weekend in the number 30 Toyota Tundra. She finished 29th after 20, starting 26th in her first ever ra- NASCAR event. If you had a chance to see the race, torrential downpour may not have adequately described the weather. With rain throughout for the entire 225-mile race, a bait ran as high as 17th in the race, but finished 29th uh, when the checkered flag flew after the track after track contact. Quoted on her on Blogger. Bates said, it's unfortunate to get hit by the 51 with just few laps remaining, but I still had the time of my life out there and racing in the rain made it so much more fun. Adding, I hope this is only the beginning of my involvement with NASCAR. Good for her. In other news, highly played NASCAR wussy, wussies complained about the rain. I'm sure they and did. And the internet made fun of them. How about the rights and lefts? Did they make fun of that too? It was interesting how like there was a lot of drivers that just leaned into it. They're like, yeah, finally, I get to show what I can do in the rain. Yeah, I oh, finally good. get to show what I can do in a road course. And the rest of them are like... My driving suit is wet. <laughs> wet driving suit does suck. I will freely yep. admit that. Especially when you smell as bad as Jeff does. I, and you smell like it clean. I would, <laughs> wear, <laughs> I would wear Jeff's driving suit to drive any of those cars in a torrential Danport at Circuit of the Americas and would finish dead last, be laughed and by everyone, die. and wouldn't care. <laughs> Speaking of finishing dead last, uh, this weekend's Monaco <laughs> F1 race looked to be the shakeup in the Hamilton dominance of the season. And when Bottas qualified well, it seemed like, hey, it might be his moment to shine until it wasn't. If you haven't seen the video, the wheel gun, which apparently spins 10,000 RPM with over 2,000 foot pounds of torque, stripped the nut on his wheel. Uh, but what you might not know, as Hazel Southwell in the drive tells us, is Mercedes still can't get the nut off the wheel. 
at least for a little while they were still at the track. Technical director James Allison confirmed, we didn't get the wheel nut off. It sat in our garage with a wheel stand on it. It's going to have to get ground off, adding, we'll need to get a Dremel out and painfully slice through the remnants of the wheel nut. We'll do this back at the factory. <laughs> They're not going to do that at the track. <laughs> so, hey, don't feel bad about that bolt. You had to cut off your car because F1 teams do it too. Yep. That was so sad it was so I, fast so I, I was like i oh. died i died i, I know you like, like him so well i do because he's an underdog and it, sometimes he's good and sometimes he shines and now you're and you're running in second and everything's going well and all of a sudden he's just like oh i think i read a quote from him that he was just like what do you this is so slow like it's like time stands still because you're normally your pit stops are two seconds so then it's two five ten oh no i, oh, I literally no. sat there going Mercedes is screwing it up again. Right? But why do they always screw up Botas? They, uh, they never screw yes. up. Yes. That's okay. true, right? Yeah, that's your, your brother yeah. has the theory on that. This was a colossal fuck up. This was a colossal fuck up. It was somebody. We did the uh, live broadcast. It didn't go as smoothly as I'd planned, mostly because I'm not very technical savvy. But someone pointed out that they, if I had never watched F1 in my life, I would have thought that Mercedes was a mid tier, lower end, yeah. average team that just didn't yeah. care. That, yeah. yeah, their entire thing that weekend. That's yeah. sad. Sad game. Uh, if you haven't seen the close up of the metal shavings on the F1 Twitter, you need to go find it. It's pretty the, the ones that are flying. Yes. It's uh yeah. it's linked in that that Haley Southwell uh article on uh, the drive. It's go, pretty impressive. Go look at that. Go click that. It's amazing. Sad sadness. It's <laughs> all right. Concours de Le Mans was this Saturday. It's a sort of in conjunction with the Amelia Island Concours, but a day sooner and even farther away than the last time. Haggerty wrote a great piece covering the event entitled Amelia Island Concours de Le Mans gets bigger and dumber every year. Nice. And it's actually using a quote from Alan Galbraith. The links in our notes, the cover photo is the infamous Duff Beer Triumph Stag, oh, very cool. which managed to blow up entering the grounds and oiled down their grass and had to be pushed to its spot which is just awesome. And you're thinking, didn't Duff sell that car and then someone else auctioned it off? And as Eric Rude tells us, you're right. They sold it to the A2 racing guys up in Knoxville for like $1,000. They looked it over and said, I don't want this thing. So then they gave it to Jill for Lemons of Love to auction off. And it raised $10,000, which what? was awesome. Yeah. So No way. Absolutely. Uh, the guy that brought the Thunderbird to Sebring and also did really well in the Texas Rattle Traps rally uh, won the auction, got the car, very happy that he gave that money to charity, realized, I do not want this car. Decided to donate it to North Carolina's A a, uh, agricultural and technical college as a mechanical engineering product, product, which they insisted we absolutely do not want this car, and neither did any other technical school that Ed tried to give this thing to. So finally, he gave up and asked Roger if he wanted it back. That's to, hilarious. To, to, to compose, Duff Beer made $1,000, Jill raised $10,000 for Lemons of Love with it, and it has now come all the way back for free and as Eric puts it, it is without a doubt the most valuable Triumph stag on the planet right now. Link to this entire debacle is in our show notes. Uh, this car has a 3 p.m. connection. The engine that is currently in <laughs> I this car. No idea. I am like with bated breath waiting to hear the rest of this story. The engine that's currently in this car <laughs> is the odd fire buick v6 that bruce bought off a guy no! on craigslist in new hampshire when the first one blew and i want to race in that motor and that right and that <laughs> late what later went on to win class c and then they pulled out that perfectly good running engine for the supercharged one and it was sitting in the garage i knew that roger was running one of these in the duff beer car and that it blew up and, and when i was down at cmp when he was there i said hey you know what i know where there's one of these that runs great and it's just sitting gathering dust roger drove up from south carolina to greg's place to get it <laughs> drove home put it in duff one c with it when they had it so that it motor was has the now, second time it won Class that motor c. has one c and two and two different british cars that buick v6 one c and two british cars and now it's been around the world so there's the 3 p.m connection to that and car. having one c it decided its life was complete and it would go out spilling 
oil all over the grass yeah. of a park oh. in Florida. <laughs> yeah. Well, Donnie, you hear that? Mental knows it's in Florida. Uh, <laughs> that I, is I am so excited to hear that. <laughs> Upcoming races. Uh, the Lemons Yokohama Days of Thunderhill is this weekend. 114 cars wow. on a five mile circuit. Yeah. Whew, that's a long track. 18 BMWs. Boring. Nine Miatas, seven Hondas, three Porches, and what we promise as a stunning Bentley Continental version of a Chrysler 300. Okay. Watch our and the Lemon social media for images because uh, mental will be there in the judging robes. Absolutely. Cool, cool. Reset or is all. Oh, sorry. Was I supposed to yell again? Nope. Yeah. I, I usually do. It's but... fine. Uh, Lucky Dog was at Carolina Motorsports Park for the first of three Southern events in their Carolina Cup. Saturday, there were 30 cars. That's not much at CMP. That's not a lot. Uh, first was Irritable Dad Syndrome. Nine laps over full teeter racing. One second back was our buddies of the Squirt and Coronas. And from our friend and teammate, Darren, a.k.a. Big Sexy, on Saturday at hour seven, they were running first with an eight-lap lead. Slower car didn't see them passing them and hit them. Their tie rod bent 90 degrees. Took them 30 minutes to fix it and get back on track, though. Uh, that was in the CLK? SLK. Yeah. SLK, excuse me, the SLK. That's pretty quick for a tie rod in a modernish Mercedes. Well, they, they have, have like part. three. Yeah, they've got like three Mercedes techs on that team, too. And yeah. the car's... It's all home built at this point. That's true. Who knows? It's even Mercedes parts on it. Uh, Sunday's two hour race was a different story. The Coronas were first. Uh, again, that's our big sexy friend. And almost a full minute over the flying critters. So the squirting Coronas were beating the flying critters. And in third place was Turtle Tuned, a lap back. I love these names hey matt Connolly, listen up that's right <laughs> you want to get mentioned on our show yeah. have a name like the flying critters so they uh if for those of you who have never been to carolina they have a jesus hour and it's kind of in the middle of the day so lemons usually stops and then continues the race after that uh, but they actually split it into a sprint race and then a continuation of a longer race. So after Jesus hour, a third five hour race uh, saw the Coronas again on top at the podium, a whole lap over the irritable, irritable dad syndrome. And the third was, I have no idea what this stands for. W O F T A M eight or T O T A M, which was eight laps back. Yep. And Big Waft Sexy Ham. did add, yeah, Waftam. Uh, as Chrissy mentioned, there's only 30 cars on this. All right, this is independent verification because we've all raced Lucky Dog and we loved it. So Big Sexy added, Lucky Dog was a lot of fun and it's a good organization. So if you're down south and you're looking to expand your repertoire, absolutely check out Lucky Dog. Yeah, totally. they're going to do some fantastic tracks. Not only does mm -hmm. uh, Carolina Motorsports have a new surface, but they're also doing Charlotte. Roval, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. All right, listener feedback time. Uh, so I was talking about my car choices last week, and AJ on the YouTube said, uh, I'm two years into used VW ownership. Used VW ownership, he said. My first German car after many consecutive years of driving Japanese cars, I have to say it's been way more reliable and pleasant than I had anticipated. The only real annoying part was having to go buy all of the Torx and triple square sockets and the other tools that work on a VW and nothing else. Everything is a T25 or a 10 millimeter triple square fastener. I feel that is totally uncalled for. That is AJ saying, I feel that is totally uncalled for. Chris, please explain to the world or Chrissy, because you're the VW owner in the group. The hell is a triple square? It's actually what exactly what it sounds like. It's 12 points. It's three squares on top of each other. So yes, it is like a reverse 12 point Torx. I was surprised that he didn't add the, uh, I was going to say G12, but that's a Mark four. I don't that's know the what coolant, they right? Yeah. Yeah. I used to carry around jugs of it. 
jugs G, it's a special coolant I didn't yes know that. oh yes well in mark force because that's what i had um oh. now i think it's a g25 I don't so say. so wait a minute so let's go back to the triple square so it's 12 points but it's not a bolt head no it is it's, female it's, it's a female point so you need like a weird torx looking thing yeah okay yeah because something has to be difficult. they have that on bmws though don't they sorry chrissy I mean, no no? no, they don't. BMW likes um, Audi Torx, a o o u t i e, not a u d i. That's what it is. It's <laughs> the star. Audi Torx, the yes, little, yes, the star thing. Okay, yes, cool. I'm sorry, Chrissy. Go ahead. Our co- our oops, sorry, uh, be to be on mute. Uh, our cool suit cooler discussion prompted James to say, for the cool suits, a friend of mine would freeze milk jugs uh, of water and swap those out. Freezer at the track with a weekend supply. You don't overflow the water when you swap it too. Yep, not sure. We've tried things like that in the past, and because milk jugs are so big, like it ends up with a lot of cool water in it with a chunk of ice in the middle. It doesn't really cool the pump the, the ice the cool shirt thing down much anymore you need something a little smaller like half gallon jugs that'd probably be better well we did like two liters for a while we did yeah and that we did the same problem with those yeah. i uh we also we tried six packs like literally just little six packs of like aquafina and it's the same deal they load in and out very well but yeah. the water flowing by them just doesn't get very cold and uh yeah you notice almost immediately but you know that's us and you know we're very pretentious obnoxious serious racers i don't know but we just bougie, like to be bougie. cold just like that <laughs> feeling when you turn I mean, the cool shirt cooler on the gonna, first time when you're hot it's so great if you're gonna go cool shirt you want go cool. bigger go home you yeah. know you don't want like tepid you want yes exactly it's cool. not a tepid shirt it's a cool <laughs> shirt that 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 yes yep. i i want nipples that can cut glass when i turn on that cool shirt yeah. cooler um, I, just I, I for wanna, a little while I and wanna, then they can ooh. go away yeah and, and i know yeah. we've covered this but the live bait switch that's the problem. Problem. It's not the problem. That's a solution. the solution. No, because we all crank it up too much. <laughs> oh, I do not. It's your own fault when you it do it. It is your though. own fault. You know better. Yep. Oh, Absolutely. Boy. Hey, so talking about the E1R race that none of us were able to attend, Tyler said, uh, quote, E1R iRacing was great this week. I got a lap of practice for race one, got a good start, and led the race for about a third of a lap before <laughs> smashing the car up and fighting to get back to eighth. Second race, I finally had my Lewis Hamilton moment, started second, lost the position to wheel spin, and then took the lead after a few turns and didn't make a mistake the rest of the race. Uh, driving the Radical SR8 at NJMP is unbelievably fun. Oh, Great. Cool. Thanks, Tyler. I suck at racing. Update. <clears throat> so I wrote down everything that happened, and I have buried it in my pile of notes. I apologize. So it was it was the trash area sprints in the Gladiator. I started out with just me and Bearded Sim Racer out in the uh, commentator booth later on. Brandy joined us, and then Hobson joined us, and I actually had to slip out for a prior engagement. They started out in Olton Park with the World Rally Cars, and literally, like, one of the YouTube watchers went, why are you running rally cars on a paved surface? And it was, well, wait till a few minutes later, because they headed to Phoenix for uh, street stocks on a rallycross course. Nice. Because why not? There was an excellent DeLorean that someone had turned one of the uh, Camaros into a DeLorean. Fantastic. And the evening wrapped up with the trophy trucks and the street stocks at Laguna Seca, which is always fun because the trophy trucks, the fastest way around is to stay off pavement as much as you possibly can. We had a random winner picked, but I can't remember which truck it was. But if you go back and watch the YouTube broadcast, he had a, uh, it was the trophy truck and it had a picture of Dale Earnhardt and then an arrow that said much better Dale with a picture of Dale Stemple. And I can't argue with any of it. And we all unanimously decided that was the winner just for the theme alone. Totally. Cool. Uh, we did our regular Monday night E1R race. Uh, I believe it's a warm up because they are also going to, Gilvenu circuits, right? Next Gil, week. Gilvenu. And it's Friday. This oh, it week. is Friday this it week. It is Friday, Friday this good, week. Good yeah, because, Friday. Of, uh, because so, of the holiday. Because of the holiday weekend. So many of you will probably be hearing this and it'll already be over. Uh, but yes, we went to Montreal, right? It's in Montreal? It is. No. This is the Canadian Grand Prix yeah, yeah. track. It's on an, a man made island in the middle of the St. Lawrence River in Montreal that was originally made for the uh, World's Fair. 
I did not know that. I knew it was fun an fact. island, but I never and knew it was full a of fun facts. man-made yeah. island. Yeah, and that's what a lot of the track is, apparently, as I read about it, is the roads that were on the island from the World's Fair, and then they kind of made those into a racetrack with some corners and stuff. Wow, that's cool. Uh, we had Miatas. We had TDIs. We had Skippies. We had the McLaren, which was crazy fast, and the Porsche Cayman GT4 and the Mustang, the FR500. Uh, I was in the Cayman. Uh, Mental, you were there. You were there for the second race, not for the first race. I was for the. I was there for the first race. I, I just I fought my computer the whole time, but I was also in a uh, Porsche. And despite missing the first two laps, <clears throat> I beat you. But, yeah, I, you know. I could not figure that damn track out. I did much better in the second race. Second race was Radicals 49s. Uh, the Formula Renault, the Delara, and the AMG GTs, uh, and I was in the I was in the Radical. And man, let me tell you, that Radical sticks. I love the Rad. I feel like Superman in the Radical. Uh, one person did the Aussie V8 Ford Falcon. That was Tyler, and I was able to like keep up and like almost pass Tyler several times. So that Aussie V8 must be terrible. He he actually was talking about that in the uh, Discord. He's like, I can't get this thing to like do anything I want it to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, The report from Uncle Dave, because I didn't remember uh, in our Slack channel, was he uh, he thinks Jay Becker won them both. Uh, Mental had sound issues, that's for sure. Then wheel issues. Jeff is still terrible. And Husty (laughs) says that the Nuremberg ring is still amazing. And he has like 10 bajillion laps or something. And he was talking about the Nuremberg ring the whole time. And no Tom Lamino, so the, the was talk quiet. was like almost G-rated. There was no like the back of everybody's car was safe. Yeah. And you know who else is also amazing and will keep the back of your car safe? <laughs> Just do it. Chrissy's mom. Chrissy's mom. <laughs> that's, so, uh, that's weird. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> it's weird that uh, 192 shows in, we're still doing that same bit. <laughs> Hi, mom. I feel like we'd hurt her feelings the first time we don't. And we can't stop now. Come on. Exactly. Of a list of feelings that I'm comfortable hurting in this world, literally like down at the bottom, it's like Chrissy's mom and, you know, just ahead of my wife. Like, like, like I'll hurt my dog's feelings before I'll hurt Chrissy's mom's feelings. Dogs get over it. Dog get over it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, you a pepperoni? Okay, great. (laughs) Squirrel. Squirrel. Topic time. This hobby is dumb. We all know that, but it's also no different than any other. <laughs> Stamp collecting, hunting, bicycling, numismatism, restoring old boats. That's a, what, that's the what, worst what? hobby. N- 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 Nymistism? What is that? Oh, I'm a numismatist. We're numismatists. Mm-hmm. Coin collectors. Coin collecting. Oh. Okay. Yes. How about yeah, you? Uh, really are full work. of fun facts. Now Artist. you're just now you're just trying too hard. Oh, no, <laughs> we're, we are. We're, we're that's a thing. Yep. Oh, yeah. All these hobbies, you have different levels of commitments, budgets, abilities, desires, and insanity. <laughs> and to keep this hobby growing, you always need new people to keep excitement and interest and keep it from going away. Yeah. Now, it might be annoying as hell that you're the finger quotes gearhead at work and having young folks ask you all kinds of really dumb questions. Uh, True example, I had someone ask me if an intercooler would help their car go faster. They had a non-turbocharged car, and I had to explain to them what an intercooler actually was. Uh, But consider this, the way cars are going and, and really just the truly terrible stuff you see in car movies, even the good car movies, it's completely possible that that new enthusiasts just don't know where to go. So right or wrong, they see you with the race photos on your desktop or you're wearing a team shirt or you're driving your daily car and it's covered in race stickers. So you're the one that they're going to ask. So our goal tonight is maybe to help you steer them in a healthy direction, answer some questions, uh, be a good ambassador for the hobby. If you are a near, uh, excuse me, a new gearhead, hopefully this will give you some direction, build a filter to know when someone is full of crap uh, or answer some of the very simple questions you might be too shy to ask. All right. So, um, I want to start with some basics. 
Um, but let's let's talk about our pedigrees for a little bit. Um, I, I grew up in this. My I grew up in the back of a rally car, a TSD rally car. My father had MGs and Datsun 2000 Fair Fair Ladies, and uh, you know we, we hung out with people with like Porsches and stuff because he was always involved in the sports car club. Uh, Chris, you you grew up in this, right? You're, you're you've been around British cars. Your mother had a British car. The first British car we had was my 1960 MG that when I was 15. My dad like knew how to work on stuff a little, like, you know, we'd change the spark plugs in the boat and stuff, but that's it. I just started taking stuff apart and occasionally I got it back together. You and you worked professionally in the car biz for a little bit, right? A little bit. Yeah. Mostly, but I just learned by, well, I done took that apart. If I want it to work again, I got, I got to figure it out <laughs> and a lot of, a lot of struggle and occasional success. I should also mention my grandfather was a diesel mechanic. Mm -hmm. So I had a mechanic in the family, but my father can't turn a wrench at all. He just loved cars. Chrissy Metzl, tell us about your background. I have, you were a youth. How'd you get into this? Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I've told the story a hundred times. I wasn't really allowed to. My dad came home one time and the hood was up on my car and he's like, what's the matter with it? And I said, nothing. I was just, he cut me off. They put the hood down. Why are you messing with it? You're going to break it. So I, I had to learn all this stuff as I got older and I, I, uh, being stubborn and probably suffering some sort of undiagnosed learning disability and just being me, I've got to do everything the hard way, which is you know, oh, we know. Take it, take it apart, and then it doesn't go back together. So I just get a bigger hammer. Thing, um, I owned a Volkswagen for my first car, so I learned how to do everything <laughs> by default. Oh, I have you beat. <laughs> I own an Air National Harvester. Oh, sure. I'm just saying that that's, that's worse. how I. Well, no, maybe not. <laughs> Mark IV. <laughs> I mean, I'm Jeez. telling you, like the, when I bought it, the. Uh, whatever this is a, that's a dumb story anyway uh i had problems with it since the day i bought it so i learned yeah. the hard way having, you having like owned a, a mark ii having owned a mark ii gti chrissy totally wins that argument oh mark twos are fine yeah, mark yeah. fours are bad that's the problem <laughs> but like no. before you even had a car was there any kind of car influence no. you read car magazines car nope, anything nope nope nope, nope. 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 Well, it's the ex-husband was what got me started and actually understanding some parts of cars they take apart and not put back together uh that was a thing yeah, my, I read Car and Driver since the time I could read. But anyway, let's start with some basics. Okay, here's some basics understandings that I think we need to get out. Well, before right you do job. that, tell, oh, tell them what the point of the show is. Read that last line. Oh, uh, hopefully we can save you some frustration, embarrassment, and money, which if you're going to be in this hobby, you're going to need a lot of it. Cool. Ho I, and really, I, I like what Chris said earlier. We want to open the sport to the youth. And we want to make sure there are people to take this sport on. And I just don't mean like endurance racing. I mean, car stuff. And that's what we're going to talk about. Let's talk about some one thing. Chrissy, I believe you're the un youngest person on the podcast, but I hate to break it to you. You're old. I know. Thanks. Our methods are old. Magazines don't exist anymore. Every host on Top Gear is like way past retirement age. Message boards are like not like the TikTok people have no idea. Yeah, what but that like means. Reddit's a thing, and they and have Reddit is there. a thing. We're gonna and we're gonna definitely talk about that. But we're old and we don't get it sometimes. So if you hear us saying something on this podcast and you're like those stupid old people, you write us and you tell us what is cool because we don't know. All right. Put it in the doodly uh, do. You put it in the doodly do oh, if you're here no, on No, not the YouTube. doodly do. Um, and, and, and in general, we're going to say we need to embrace what we don't understand. Hella flush looks really dumb to us. But drifting's cool. I, I went to a drift event at New Hampshire. Uh, they had it at Pittsburgh. And it was filled with young people having a blast. It's not my sport, but I said this looks cool and fun. I took my nephew, who is a college sophomore, to an autocross with my beat ass Miata, and there were very few fun very few young people. And from an outside person, it didn't look fun. Oh, I don't want to be old. Yeah. I I I, I don't mind being old. I don't want to be lame. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I don't think I don't think autocrossing is lame, but I'm saying that I don't think the youth is picking it up. And this is the last thing I'm going to say, and then we're going to jump into stuff. 
gatekeeping is not cool under any circumstances. If you think your hobby, your part of the hobby is cooler than someone else's, get that crap out of here. Okay. Or this card doesn't belong in this show because it's just not weird enough or not cool enough or not brown enough, or it's an automatic or whatever. You got to open the doors for everybody. You can't say that's not cool. Okay. So if the kids want to have a two-step contest and you're like, I don't know what that is. You go check it out and you try and learn, try and embrace it. Don't yuck someone else's yum is really what I'm trying to say. Unless you're trying to bring a flat black BMW to lemons and then it's That's just lazy. Yeah. Well, Unless we're going to ridicule Duke in it. you. If there's an yeah. Iron Duke in it, then you win. But otherwise, oh, yeah. Yeah, you're just being lazy. Yeah. <laughs> but we wouldn't kick them out. No, absolutely not. Yes. We'll just and encourage I, them just to ridicule. get a little more fun. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, exactly. All right. So let's start with what I wish I knew when I started. Whew. Um, I had high school shop class. And I actually learned stuff in there, even though I like hung out with my mechanic grandfather and had been wrenching for a very long time. Uh, stupid class. You might actually learn some stuff. So why not take it? Um, and then it's okay to be whatever you're into. I was into trucks for a long time. I, I you know, the international scout, I read like Peterson's four wheel and off road and, you know, like whatever. And that's the next thing I'm going to say is consume all the media you want and don't let not having the stuff you see on the blog or in the magazine or on the show or on the YouTube channel, just because you don't have it, don't let that stop you from going out and doing stuff. You know, if you want to off-road your Suzuki Sam, no, not even Suzuki Samurai. That's too old. If you want to off-road your Rav Four, do it. Whether you have those great tires or not, if you don't have money if, for the turbo, that, that doesn't mean you shouldn't drive flat out. No, if you want to off-road your friggin' Buick Century, look up the Gambler Five Hundred. Do it. Yeah, do it. That's what I'm saying. Do it. Yep. I. I wish when I started, I knew that projects are always going to take three times as long and cost three times as much as you expect. So be careful of how big a project you get into. Don't just go, I'm going to take everything apart and cut all these things out. Take a slow your roll a little bit, start small, get some small successes. It'll start to snowball, but you've got to start somewhere. Do something small to start. And are along the same lines. Uh, all car hobbies are expensive. It's funny because I wrote this before we even started talking about my Volkswagen problem. Um, some people are smart and tell you not to invest in bad car brands. Uh, maybe you should consider listening to them. Or at least <laughs> at least consider that money gone. You're never getting Or you back. don't know how much it's going to be just trying to hold on to something that you love or you thought yeah. you loved. Yeah. <laughs> that's a That's a good one. Um, uh, mine is, a uh, just, just get over yourself. Ask the dumb questions. If the person you're asking that dumb question mocks you for not knowing the answer to that dumb question, go find some new people. You need a new mentor. I, I wasted so much of my life, uh, when I was in my twenties trying to keep this, oh, I'm a car guy image. And, and there was just so much I didn't know to the point. I didn't know what I didn't know. And I could have been so much farther along if I just would have asked dumb questions before the internet, before the magazine. And, and now you have that advantage. So never be afraid to ask a really dumb question. Everyone facing me on the screen right now has done that. They have asked, or I have asked them a really dumb question. And to their credit, they've all kind of looked at me a little bit and went, how is it you don't know that? And then explained it. And it's always worked out better for me, probably not for any of you guys, but I'm smarter. And we were there too. I mean, when we built that first Wartburg with crazy man, Jim Thwaite, who's out there, like <laughs> I did not know how to do half the crap I knew by the end of that project and jumping in and doing is like the way to do it. I mean, he said, you know, do this. I said, what me? We still do that. Like that's you know, true. Work weekends. We still do a lot of, 
stretch projects with adult supervision and but that gets everyone better confidence like yeah yeah no which what it is. uh is that did we get out of there? Were you there yes we are we're there Whew. so what i wish young folks knew and it's perfect because what i was about to say is the stretch project uh, you can find out how to do everything these days. The amount of stuff that is on the internet, like I couldn't figure out how to change a light bulb in a car and I YouTubed it and there was a guy showing me how to do it. And it was a BMW and you had to take off the inner fender liner. But in 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 past years, when, when I was a kid, the old man says with conviction we had to like find that crap in books and if you didn't have the right book you had to go buy the book and you had to go to like or the library might have had it exactly then you have to charge for photocopies of those pages that you needed people still do that let me youtube no they don't they just look it up on youtube they they do youtube has some jerk off doing every single thing to every single car on the planet you can find it and sometimes it's a good video and sometimes it isn't, but just buy that hoopty. You got to fix it to go to school, do the stretch project. Yes. You just, you, you might not have a clue how to do that head gasket, but you're going to learn. And if you don't you, the bus is there. If you don't have it done by Monday, take the bus, fix it Monday night, keep working mental. And I couldn't get into the Mercedes because the battery was dead. Uh, I, uh, I literally sat there while I was waiting for Vicky to bring the extra batteries for the keys. And I Googled every possible. And there were people that they drill all the way down today. I'm going to show you how to get into your 1987 Mercedes CLK from this serial number to this serial number. If this very specific set of circumstances has happened. So yes, there is, if, if you're savvy with the interwebs, there's always an answer. You may None of them have... worked. And then Vicky brought me the battery so that a key and it all worked for me. Well, then, that's but, the yeah. answer. Um, and sometimes, uh, well, we do this. I sit in the car. We go through and say, this needs to be done. I've sat and said, how do I dismantle the shifting knob and all of the parts inside of it on the Z? Go. This has to happen. Look it up. So it happens now, even though that we think we know what we're talking about. Yep. Um, actually, Jeff, I like what your, your last bit of this here is you've got that hoopty. <clears throat> you need that hoopty to get you to school. Having to fix it to get you to school is going to teach you something. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> yep. Humility. <laughs> yep. And better, better, than, better than having to do it before work because oh. you can usually get a ride to school. All right. Um, other thing I would like for the other, the young, young youths to know. Is this the basics to be self-sufficient? Like checking oil, like the fact that oil is important and you should check it so you don't blow up a motor. Uh, how to change a tire, how even just to put air in a tire and like to know like how, where do I find the placard in the door jam that says the number of air instead of just, That's I don't great know. great tip. Like it says 50 on the side of the tire. That's right, right? And then, no, that's too much. Like, th- you know, things like that. Um, really just being able to help yourself instead of just calling AAA for the most basic things. That's what I wish the youths would know. Mental. There was a commercial for an insurance company out there about, uh, it was comparing this insurance company to that insurance company. It goes, oh yes, they were able to help our young man when he got a flat tire. Then it shows the other one where the kid is calling his dad, trying to find out how to change a flat tire. And dad has no idea how to change a flat tire. Oh, I remember that. And it was an infuriating commercial to me because yeah, okay, I get what you're trying to say about your roadside assistance. But if you've sent your child, your own DNA into the world without knowing how to change a tire, do you not love them? Or, I mean, there are any number of places where you're not going to get cell reception or the battery, or they don't have two hours to wait because they're on the side of a busy road and they need this very basic skill set. And if you, as the grown up, don't have that skill set, you need to find someone who does and teach your child to do that before you set them off. And that's tough. Uh, you all remember I talked about the, the I guess he's a 13 year old now, 14 year old who wants to learn about how to race cars. And he brought up oh, your intern, my intern, yes. The- yeah. The intern, which I really have to email and invite him to NJMP now that there will be guests. Um, 
but his dad didn't uh, doesn't know anything about cars and his son got into cars by watching nascar and he wants to be a professional racer and etc etc and so forth it took a little bit of checking his bravado at the door and not losing to his own masculinity and saying hey jeff can you help me and Right then, I'm just going to say, if you think this is a masculinity thing, and Chrissy, you know, we always talk about feminism and girls belong in motorsports, etc. But if you like feel like less of a man because you don't know how to change a tire, get over it. This and is learn. Not, this if is, you think yeah, you're this less is of not a, on a, a human because you can't change a tire, learn how to change a tire. Yeah. No, I, anybody who has a car should know this. This is not a man and woman. Exactly. Thing. And exactly. there's everybody there. Are, I, I know some uh, young women who own cars and don't know uh, what um, the genie lamp is. My family will be laughing because he said, <laughs> what is the genie lamp? Yeah. When you see the genie lamp, we're a little too late um, yeah, to put stuff in the 710 cap yes. when you see the genie lamp. Ahead, okay. I think oh, it's actually my turn. Um, so I feel like if you have a car, uh, more you push a car, the easier when you're trying to race or try, I guess this is more towards when you want to be a race car driver, you know how to find the limit. I uh, know where the limit is. So find a cheap car, take it out in the snow in a parking lot and in a, or in a dirt pit or whatever you have around and hoon it. Um, I feel like I wish I did that and I didn't do it when I could have, and you all did. So um, that's going to, get you if you want to be a race car driver that's a good thing to have yeah how did those people who live where there isn't snow learn how to drive in slippery situations dirt roads oh, i said dirt pit yeah, yeah. i guess Mud. and Mud. something yeah lots of yep. dirt. just just wet because they all have bald tires because they're not used to you know doing <laughs> things right those kids in north <laughs> carolina right and we don't and we don't know how to change georgia them. Yeah. yeah yeah we have bald tires we don't know how to change them uh, my thing is, is hope is a wonderful thing to have. It is never a course of action. So embrace this reality. Your vehicle is going to break and it is going to break at the absolute worst possible time. Jeff mentioned the bus. If you're going to start tearing into your car, or if you only have one car, have a plan for when it breaks. And that could be literally as simple as a bicycle bus schedule, depending on where you live. Or if you, if you've got a good size distance to commute, maybe not try to modify anything outside of understanding that basic maintenance. Yeah. Hey, if you are a car person, you're going to make friends with car people. So when yours breaks, tell them to come pick you up. <laughs> My friend had a 77 triumph spitfire. I had a 73 international scout. The chances of both of them functioning on the same week were pretty slim, <laughs> but we always got to school. Yeah. We only raced Joey five Oh once <laughs> onto the school grounds. Not for pinks though. No. Good. All right. So what's next? Uh, suggestions get started. Yeah. how to get started? Get your hands dirty. If you got a problem, watch the YouTube video, look at the manual and just take it step by step. This was every car. It was built by a person. Well, mostly, I mean, or it can be built and rebuilt by a person. That means you can do it too with the right knowledge and tools. So start small, get your hands dirty, do it. And if you have someone willing to let you help them in quotes, take them up on it. You yeah. be the intern. Get the adult supervision. They'll let you do some smaller projects. You do those successfully. You could do some little bigger projects. You get success there. You do a little bigger projects. You're going to make mistakes because that's how you learn. But when you've got the adult supervision, the consequences of it are usually pretty low. So do it. I had written something down at the bottom of these show notes as we started. Do it. And it was, just, yeah, it was, it was just do it. all hard things that I've learned over the years. And then I kind of sprinkled these in here. And there's a couple of things in here. Um, when you're solving a problem in the car, uh, you're going to have to take it back apart. And you're almost certainly going to have to take it back apart more than once, which is going to help you get good at it. But I remember putting a clutch in an RX-7 one time, and I got to where I could take that transmission out in 15 minutes because I had to do it 14 times because I kept missing one little step. Uh, there is no such thing as magic in a bottle. 
Nothing, nothing in a bottle is going to fix your radiator, fix your transmission, fix your engine, fix your electrical. If it says pour this in and your problems go away. It might be temporary though. Right out of the gate. Never. It's, (laughs) it might be. Head gasket in a bottle. It's copper. It's got to (laughs) work. It really does it, and it's going to make your life harder. Just understand. And that brings me to my next point, which when I was trying to do my plumbing issue, why I stayed up all night. If you find yourself slathering any sort of sealant or JB weld or silicone or gasket in a tube or whatever it is, it's broken. Even if it's a new part, you broke it. It's leaking. Get a new one. Stop. You're just making your life miserable and frustrating. And to really emphasize what Chris said, Take it apart slow. Make notes. Take pictures. You all have cell phones with cameras on them. Take pictures. Use sandwich bags and, and, and lunch bags and label them. Because as you lay this all out, you're like, I'm just going to put this right here because I'll be doing this again in 20 minutes. Something's going to come up. You're going to get delayed. You're going to get distracted. You're going to get pulled away. And then you're going to have to try and figure out what bolt goes where. And anything that you help to help you reconstruct the crime scene of what you just took apart is going to make your life easier. And that is a lesson I learn again and again on a weekly basis. Blue tape and a Sharpie on both sides of every connector you undo. Mm. Then you know where it goes. Yes. This all all makes me think of, I'm sorry, not mental is the only one not going to get this, but uh, taking apart Moe's E30. 36. 36, yeah. Um, when we took it apart, he had a little notepad and it had number one and everything had a number that Every correlated and it number. went. And so he insisted on it. He just it saying, worked. Wait, what'd you undo? Wait, what, where did that go? And then you would have to and, write and it And it was like so, three digit numbers. Like oh, there was yeah. over a hundred connectors. Oh, labeled. Yeah. It was yeah. like 142. Most that's of the blah, time blah, you blah, just blah. were like, well, I yeah. think this went here because this is how long it is. And this is where it went, but uh, it, it helps. Double it, check. It's good. Yeah, it's good. Cardboard, like, like chunks of cardboard with holes in them for bolts that you pull out yep. of specific covers, especially if the bolts are all different lengths, like mm-hmm. they like to do on timing covers. And I always covers. kick that over and then lose track. <laughs> <laughs> Don't yep. put it on the floor. Floor is only for things that you do not know what they are. Yeah. Uh, milk, uh, not milk, egg cartons are good yes. for stuff like that too. Oh, we're keeping them good. separate. That's a really good one. All right. Next, next suggestion for how to get people started to get started driving the street survival school put typically put on by tire rack and bmw club it's a great way to teach car control skills focused on teens and accident avoidance and it gives them a safe place to understand what happens when your car gets to its limit like what happens when you step on the brake pedal as hard as you can and then you realize oh you know what that's not as hard as i can i can brake harder than that like when then what happens when the abs comes on People don't know, or they, they first time it comes on, they panic and they get off the brakes. I, I, the brakes failed. No, they didn't. That's what they do. Um, like, how do you swerve around something? If you don't know how hard your car can swerve, you might just not and just hit something. So they teach all that kind of thing. I think it's a great program. Everyone thinks it's, it's great. And once you've done that, or if you already know how to drive a bit, get started with some kind of basic performance driving. Autocross, you know, is it's it's low risk, low cost, low stress, and your car control skills that you'll learn from it'll be great. Find the guy with the biggest hat at the <laughs> autocross. <laughs> and he is probably the one you will learn from because he's been doing this a while and know, and knows the tricks. Uh, track night in America is a great low stress way to actually get out on track and do HPDE stuff. And if, you know, if your car is good enough to, to do an HPDE, there's just most of the big clubs have a good solid learning programs in HPDE one. Get started. Don't let not having a good car stop you. Yeah. You What's can go to an we've... autocross in your mother's old minivan. Yeah. Like what's the worst car you can remember seeing at an autocross or on track like first one that comes to mind, I was at a, a NASA HPDE one, a student had a gold 09 Corolla base model automatic on steel wheels and all season tires. And I was like, awesome. that's fantastic. They're going to learn a lot and have a good time. Why not? I, I was at an autocross and a guy was uh, in town for a business trip in Oklahoma city and he had a Chevy Cavalier rental <laughs> and he brought it out. To, he's like, Oh, I was on the website. Saw an autocross. Came out here and did it. Yeah. Uh, I would say that even though this uh, SCCA autocross that I went to was pretty open, 
there was not a single the, the machinery was pretty um intimidating there was a lot of mustangs a lot of focus sts and fiesta sts and ton of miatas i would feel weird showing up in my buick skylark so sorry show up feel weird you're trust me no one was gonna judge you but if you rolled in and something weird you'd feel a little weird it, it, oh, I, some I, of I the can, people there will like it. Absolutely. That. There were somebody they, be like, you're awesome. This yeah, is I great. agree. I agree. I, but I hear all the time from my students, my college students, because a bunch of them are there. A bunch of my college students go to the autocrosses. Oh, I'm going to, you know, oh, autocross coming up next weekend. You going? Oh, ah, my car. It's, you know, my tires are bald or my, my new shocks aren't in or my whatever. Like, Lane, just go. Just go. I don't know how many times I've heard to, oh, I'm totally going to go to grid life or I'm going to go to this or I'm going to go to that as soon as I get part X. Exactly. You, as soon you, as I get part you X. Never, you never need part X unless it's safety. Like a, uh, as soon as I get a seatbelt, I'm okay, going to go. Okay, you need that. Yeah. Okay, that break one. Pads. But, break pads. Break yeah. pads. <laughs> okay, break pads. Sure. You know, but if you're looking for a high performance part that you need, no, just go. Yeah. I, uh, I but, see that being the, the what's holding a lot of them back. Yeah. To that end, if you're going to invest in something and you're going to start autocrossing, especially if it's your only car, as soon as you possibly can, you want to get a set of street and a track set of wheels and tires. And like your street tires could just be steelies that you found at the junkyard with Douglas all track, ex, you know, extra seasons. I don't know what that means. Extra, extra seasons. seasons. Uh, but, you know, and then so you and then you've got fifth your season. You, you, put on the, season you put on the absolutely. paprika. Yeah, yeah exactly. They still do nothing for seasoning. It's just for but color. It, yeah. Yeah, just for, but uh, you, then you get your, you know, your uh, Wagner organic power stop brake pads and you save the good brake pads for when you're just at the track. Um, yeah, Mental, I'm going to disagree with you there. Ooh, okay. I think that's a barrier to entry. I don't think you need to feel like you need to have that. I think no, you no, should no, no, not need to have it. it. Just it's, it's if you continue to do it, that's where I'm going, but you're right. Go for it. Okay. Yeah. Like if you want to get started and you have Wagner extra quiet, you know, five seasons, Great, go for it. As long as there's tread on them, put some air in them and go. Your organic quiet stops are probably not going to handle the the racetrack, but they'll handle the autocross okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, And you can find dual duty stuff that will do it okay for an occasional use. Like you can get the Continental ECS that's going to do fine on track. It can't handle endurance racing, but it'll be fine on lapping days. Mm -hmm. Like a, a Hawk HP Plus or HPS pad, HPS actually, that will handle performance stuff in small doses and it's a totally streetable pad so once you're into it sure but don't let that hold you back and and Uh, i'm sorry if i phrased it the wrong way that was where i was going once you're into it you know you can have help bring the crappy last forever tires to the mm -hmm. autocross and then you don't worry about tearing them up and if you're going to go down this route you, you're going to want a good jack and a good set of jack stands even if you don't have a place where you can work on your car you can do that usually at the autocross and to this end harbor freight actually sells good jacks and good jack stands and they're not that expensive uh i'll just throw out there i love the power stop z32 there's z23 excuse me not 32 um that's a z car uh the evolution pads they are great dual use pads and they are only a few dollars more than your wagners but use the wagners when you do that brake job that's when you upgrade don't wait (laughs) mcdonald's has an entire menu that's only a few dollars more than the wagners but yeah it's true they're organic they're made of wood (laughs) made of wood jacks and jack stands you're absolutely right ask family for tools for christmas Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. Especially safety related things. Mm-hmm. Because yes. mom moms love to buy safety stuff. Go ahead, Chrissy. I don't even want to say this one. I oh, wrote well, it. Then I'll, I'll throw it out there. <laughs> I well, I mean, I, I wrote it, but re- so I said read card magazines and we started when we started this, we said nobody reads car magazine because they write on the internet now. The internet. Um, read your car magazines on the your- internet sure yes but read good ones so that's a good way to learn some lingo um you can and then you can learn different kinds of racing and you just kind of what's out there um but then you could understand parts of the car there's ads for tires you start learning things of what things are good for um i don't know read car magazines but i I will say you're absolutely right that the ads in a car magazine 
will give you way more information than the first 10 seconds of whatever bullshit is on that YouTube channel that probably doesn't have anything to do with cars. But in a car magazine or a performance centered car magazine, if it's a, if it's an off-road magazine, you're going to have advertisement for off-road tires and off-road parts. So it's much more specific. Chrissy, good thought. Keep going. Okay. okay. I just felt like this is, that's an old person thing. So if it Chris reads, so car, if, if yeah. there's a, a stack of what, 95 GRMs next to Chris's bedside, uh, that means it's an old person thing. So uh, there's that. Right, right there. He already read that one at the beach on Sunday. Um, that uh, Jeff just held up at a URM. Anyway, um, I said car specific. Oh, I didn't say this. I said enthusiast forum- forums, and then we filled in a bunch of here. Um, GRM is a favorite of all of ours, so uh, that's definitely a good place to go. A lot of uh, the forums on GRM, Chris actually lives on the GRM forums. And I said, what are you reading about now? Oh, we're reading about somebody's house project when they did this and blah, blah, blah. And he learns all kinds of crap there. Yes, mental. The hallmark of the Grassroots Motorsports Forum, and there is a link in our show notes, is that they are the least judgmental corner of the internet in the history of the internet. Uh, You could go in there and ask the most bonehead question, and someone will painstakingly explain to you the answer. I'll be very nice about it. Or sometimes. I don't know. Serge, noob. Unlike the next one that Chrissy is about to suggest. <laughs> oh, well, so I did, and I, I skipped over car specific Reddit because I don't know. I'm sure there are some, but, you know, it seems like. Oh, very, oh there is a Reddit for every single car model out there. I'm a member of the Mazda in... 3 Reddit, but oh. they will tear you a new one. <laughs> that's like VW Vortex level. Of, <laughs> oh, that's great. Noob, do there not ask Bring that question. Bring it back. All right. Um, so go there with, with, uh, careful. Lame through be, skin. Be, yeah. be careful. Um, no, no, read, read, read. Don't post unless you're sure. <laughs> sure. Well, you might want to, you might want to be, um, wary of what you're reading too. You never know if it's kind of an open forum, you end up with some people that may not be giving the best information anyway. Um, Lemons Forum. Uh, so I think the Lemons Forum has been, I actually asked Chris earlier because he doesn't do social media. I think it's pretty slow these days. So I'm not really sure that you'll get a whole lot from them. Old um, people stuff. Right? But, if you, of, but if, you ask a, if you ask a specific question, you're most likely going to get a well thought out, polite answer, even if, even if you think it's a dumb question. It's, it's another only, polite. It'll, it'll only, probably be Chris Egan. Right. Um, it's only old, it, but... old people. It's Which... only old people that go to the forums anymore because they don't do I don't do social media. Well, there's, so there's I go lot... to the forum. Well, there's a lot to search there, too. That's a nice thing that's not on social media. There's, there's no search button to get to so lose historical information. Uh, okay. I know a person there. Uh-huh. I don't like social uh, media. But yeah, Chris, Chris Egan's going to give you good advice. Absolutely. Every time. The, I, actually, the Facebook groups are very fill, filled with good advice also. I think that's where we're getting at. I'm not sure then, what the next one is. is and then bickering uh, over various. Uh, so it's, it's, it's Rob Siegel and he's AKA the hack mechanic. He wrote a couple of books uh, and his, and we've got to get a link to that on our show notes. Uh, but he writes for Haggerty now and it is called the hack mechanic. And he will happily write not just about what he gets right, but what he, about what he gets wrong. And one of the pieces he wrote recently was uh, he referenced it in an article where he was hanging out with Magnus Walker and he felt bad because he sent Magnus Walker out on outdated tires. And he was really worried that he was going to kill America's favorite Porsche outlaw. And uh, he referenced an article where he had his own tire pass him because he failed to tighten it down properly. And it's fun when as, that happens. yeah, as someone who learns, who makes a lot of mistakes, I've been forced to learn from my mistakes. So I learn more from getting it wrong than I do and get it right. But it's a whole lot more efficient if I can learn from someone else getting it wrong. So that's and, kind of and, the basis of our entire show. <laughs> it really is. Learn from our mistakes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. And I, I uh, threw these last two in there, but if you want to, I'll take, okay. And then the other one is uh, it's a Facebook group and it's called, unless John Pagel signs off, it's probably a bad idea. It is a private Facebook group, uh, but if you apply, they'll usually let you in. Now it's very technical and there is a lot of smart ass on there, but John Pagel himself, if you read his answers, he is happily going to explain any reasoning behind his judgment on a safety item. And if you contact him directly, a lot of people will tell you that John Pagel is a jerk and he does this or he does that. But having dealt with the guy personally a hundred times, 
He's highly intelligent. He wants you to be safe. He doesn't want anyone to die and he doesn't want anyone in a dangerous car. And he'll walk you through why something's dangerous. So he's if you also find a his... professional cage builder with years and years of race car building experience. And before that, he owned a dyno yeah. that he ran. So he, he knows a lot of stuff. And so if you read his stuff, you're going to learn. And if you don't understand what he's talking about and you ask him for clarification, he'll, he'll explain it to you. He really will. Yeah, there's a Facebook group for everything. Uh, I recently joined the LS 300 ZLS swap Facebook group that I didn't know existed until two days ago. I and post, now he's the president. I posted a picture of our Z32 with the 4.8 and a guy with it who's about to start a Z32 with a 4.8, like messaged me like 37 different questions. And I answered them all. And, with and I'm don't, gonna... don't, just don't do it. No, just no, don't. no. I answer them all. Find with a friend who's a really good fabricator and give him the car for the oh. winner and you'll get it back. <laughs> <laughs> you will have to go to his house several times. <laughs> but they will feed you. Hopefully they'll feed you. Yes. Yeah. And they've got a great washing machine. Your yeah. laundry's yeah. done every morning. It's great. <laughs> the, the amount of technical questions that he gave me that were so I don't want to say simple to answer because if I hadn't done it, I wouldn't know the answer, but you have to be okay. Answering questions. Like we keep saying it's okay to, to ask questions, old people. It's okay to answer the questions and don't be snippy about it. It's also okay to say, I have no idea. True. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, another one I'll say here is, in-person car shows and meetups it's a way to talk to people and now that we can actually go to things if you've got your vaccine and talk to people great people there want to talk about their car they want to talk to you about it let them sometimes you'll say oh this guy's completely full of it has no idea what he's doing that's okay smile and nod and say thank you and, and talk to somebody else then that's fine there's all types You'll, you'll learn something, but you got to talk to people and, and they want to talk to you. Even the introverts, they're at a car meet. They want to talk to somebody at least a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much a car meet is a chance for me to talk about my car endlessly to random people who walk by. So it's perfectly yep. okay. <laughs> uh, and this has been one of my accidental greatest successes that I've had in uh, th this hobby is that you build a network of trusted advisors uh, and start that as soon as possible and, and consult them before you start a job. Hey, I'm about to do this. I've done this research. I've done this research. And um, they'll either go, all right, well, good luck or, eh, you know, send you a website, but the, the bigger your network of people that you trust and that have given you good advice in the past, the easier your life gets with a lot of things. Nice. I'll probably tell you, hey, go listen to the EUNR podcast show uh, number 102, and uh, th they talk about this in this episode. Uh, I've never said that ever. Okay, <laughs> except to the guy about the 300Z just <laughs> earlier today. Um, uh, media, I already said consume all of the media. I already said that um, YouTube is your friend. There are some legit shows out there. Yes, Top Gear is for fogies. The American Top Gear is not as funny. But anything you're doing to learn about cars is great. And they talk about a lot of crazy cars. But I'm going to throw out some really specific ones out there. Uh, Money Pit on the Donut Media YouTube is fantastic. Uh, guy's building a Miata and he shows you everything and it's very reasonable and he does it all in his driveway with hand tools. Uh, Sam Crack, uh, watch JR go, even Tavarish. I know he's got a million, three million probably at this point watchers. And yes, he built a Lambo, but he did it in a garage with hand tools. And now, yeah, he's got a big giant garage, but in his house garage. So you can find things like B is for build the fabricator series. Um, I love Hannah's bug. Has anybody ever seen Hannah's bug? She's like a 12 year old with a Volkswagen beetle who likes like today I'm going to learn to weld. And she like starts welding and it's pretty amazing. Like they told me to do this on a plate tomorrow. I'll do it on the bug. And it's pretty amazing. Um, I know people are still typing stuff. Mental, do you just want to, whoever's typing, just go ahead and shout them out. 
All right, sorry. I was on uh, the Haggerty is actually really building their YouTube channel right now, and oh. uh, Jason, they've got Jason Camisa doing a lot of explaining uh, kind of bits. One of the, uh, his better ones out there is how the plane of a crankshaft affects the sound of the exhaust. And he walks it through in very basic terms, and it's it's really well done. They've got uh, any car that you're just interested in. They've got a group of people, and then they've got the uh, rated and reviewed, where they take a journalist and a race car driver and have them go head to head in a different car. But you'll still learn a lot of technical concepts of why a car is the way it is, and a lot of driving technique as well. And uh, and and. Haggerty is aggressively trying to build their uh, YouTube audience and catch up with their rivals in the motor trend market. Um, I don't know if you've seen, heard the most recent apex adjacent, but um, they talked to, um, they talked to, uh, 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 it was Patrick George. I can't remember mm -hmm. who it was. They were talking yes, to actually. Yeah. Yeah, it was Pat, yeah. Patrick George. And they, and they really talked about what the new media was and how important YouTube is in the landscape of automotive culture right now. And mm -hmm. they're not wrong. No, there's a lot of YouTube content. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, lastly, uh, I added this, I, uh, if you are have, if you're a car person, or at least you have general knowledge trying to spread the wealth of information about cars of, of anything, if you're gen, if you're, but also have an access to a general kid event, like summer school, summer camps, I'm thinking like scouts, community centers, um, see if a shop is going to come out and could come out and, and talk some basics. Um, if, if you don't think that you can do it, uh, and this was actually prompted, Chris uh, had mentioned, about two summers ago, I ran a quick event. It was probably an hour, um, but it was actually, it was downtown and I brought all the stuff with me and explained to a whole bunch of, uh, I think it was just girls at the time. Um, and it was all about just car basics. So I made them a cheat sheet and, and told them how to change a tire and wear some, you know, just look for dripping things under your, he your hood and, you know, just kind of real basics, but, um, that could be get, get some people interested. And you never know if you've got some kids that are engineers and they're saying, well, I never really thought about dealing with cars, but I didn't know anything about it now. And this could be all ages too, really. You know, it might be interesting to kind of show p kids that aren't necessarily driving age, if they're just interested in kind of kicking things around. Cool. Yeah. That's a, if nothing else, they'll learn uh, some mechanics, feed me a line of crap about this. And I remember when I was at scout camp, this cool person with an NSX said, so I'm going to go with you're full of crap. Yeah. I definitely didn't use that as the example car, but <laughs> that would confuse a lot of kids. I say, do you, do you own a car that is not cool as hell? That would not be fun to take down there and show off. So truth. I took the five because the three was down for something. I don't remember. What it was. I, I will okay. say Chris that I, I shared the, a bunch of pictures of the Z build with my new friend on the Z thing. And he said, Oh my God, that NSX is amazing. And I have, it's my favorite car. <laughs> and I have wanted one since I was eight years old. And I just love NSXs. And I said, Oh, sorry, not mine. <laughs> all right. Uh, as we were hacking this all up, this, uh, this, this whole thing kind of came out a little bit uh, quick. Uh, some additional websites, and these were also located there Car Bibles. Uh, I actually interviewed for a position with them, but they wanted someone full time. And I got the full vision of what they want Car Bibles to be. And they want Car Bibles to be kind of an internet blog version of this exact episode, where people who like cars and maybe don't know it and don't understand it can go there. It's a subsidiary of the drive. It all falls under Brookline Media. But Car Bibles is an interesting place to go. And there's a lot of people that are doing some kind of dumb things, which I admire. Like uh, one person has bought a uh, Land Rover off Craigslist and are dealing with everything that you're going to deal with, with a Land Rover you brought off a Craigslist, uh, that sort of stuff. I also would buy uh, a cheap Land Rover. <laughs> <laughs> no, that'd be from terrible. someone you don't know. That's the key. You yeah, buy a Land Rover from a guy, you know, that's true. Uh, we also have the link for the track night in America grid life. If you're you just kind of like cars and you don't know what you like about cars. Grid life is a great. Hell yeah. And Luda might play Luda. Luda. Absolutely. But they, they, their, their mission is to kind of bring back all the facets of the hobby back under one roof, uh, show cars, the hella flush guys, the drifters, the time attack, the 
HPD instruction. That all happens in one weekend. And then there's a music festival and they are all over the country. Now that is a fantastic time. We've got a link to the donut media TV and some other YouTube channels. Um, do we have anything before I go into my other painful observations? I'm showing Chris the Land yeah. Rover Discovery Series 1 car Bible. That's great. Yeah. I had a Series 2. So uh, did Mental. Yes, <laughs> it was. I'll find the Series 2. It was, it was my favorite car I'd ever bought from Chris until I bought my last car from Chris. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I just threw this out there because I had a lot of PTSD as, started, as soon as we started typing this up, but just stuff I wish I knew and so many frustrating nights and uh, to, to cut to the chase, my entire actual career trajectory was altered by the fact that I liked cars. I lacked ability and I lacked the ability to make things happen that I wanted to happen at three o'clock in the morning. I was underneath my Mark II. Volkswagen GTI, after I had broken it, trying to do a modification for an autocross, it was 40 degrees. I was doing this on the street and I had exactly three hours before I had to go inside, take a shower and drive this car to work. And it was the worst sensation to this day that I've ever had in my life. Just this pressure. I had to have something done and I had no idea what I was doing. And I realized that I have really got to alter my life and really start learning a lot of things about cars. Um, so to that end, never get yourself in that position. So I, 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 as we're writing this, I had a lot of these. The first one is if you finally can't fix it, you have to take it to a professional. Yeah, it's going to be expensive. You're not giving up. And that references that earlier comment about just get over yourself. All right. Ask the dumb question. Learn what you don't know. Um, anybody around the room? Nope. Yeah, mental's an idiot. We're just, we'll, we'll stick with that one. Uh, my next thing is invest That's in good, good tools. I, uh, for the longest time, tried to get through life with a Phillips head screwdriver and a pair of vice grips. You're, you're going to have to get good tools and you're going to have to get the correct tools. Uh, you're going to take care of them. You want to like, just don't leave them around. Don't leave them out in the rain. Don't let them rust, have a place for them, have an accountability procedure for them. Cause things like to walk off, particularly socket wrenches and tools. Uh, and you don't need to snap on tool truck stuff right away, but you're going to need good tools. And that cheapo socket set you bought at CVS at two o'clock in the morning. Cause you needed a socket set at two o'clock in the morning on the bottom markdown shelf. Ain't going to cut it. Ask me how I know that specific of an answer. <laughs> But once you know, yes, huh? yeah, really? well, yeah, yeah, it was actually, it, it was an all night Walmart, but yeah, once you know <laughs> what good tools are, then Facebook marketplace, Craigslist, flea markets, yard sales, these are all your friend because you can buy one offs and stuff that doesn't continue no more and well quality, good made tools. And it may not be a matching set, but it is absolutely going to do the job you need to do. And it's going to do it repeatedly. I was at the junkyard last month and i needed one or two months ago because before the rally i needed one very specific torx head screwdriver of all things that i had not brought with me but there was a guy out front of the u pull it selling tools that he bought at a yard sale and i go out there and i look through i found exactly the one i wanted he it was a snap-on he wanted like two dollars for it i picked up another screwdriver that was a, a dollar and i gave him five bucks and thank them for his time. So once you know what you're looking for, you can actually find good tools and you don't have to pay those big prices for it. I'm going to plug Harbor Freight. They do have the, decent stuff. The new icon series is worth it. You don't even need now, a new icon. Just don't yeah, buy well, the cheapest it, yeah. on the list. Well, and, the but if stuff. it's, if it's, if it's something that you hammer with or hammer against, Oh, grab the cheapest one they have. I don't. Yes. But, true. True. And but, there are times for the cheap stuff is it's the one you leave in a car or I can like our case, I bought one, you know, the, the typical blow mold, you know, hundred piece kit of things. I leave it in the boat. I know it's going to get trash, but also someday I might need one of those various things. So that's the time and place for the cheap stuff. Yep. <laughs> Buy the middle yeah. line stuff. The middle line stuff is 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 yeah. just as good as Craftsman was twenty years ago, and I still have my Craftsman. They sit next to each other in the mm. box. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, I think there might be more on this. Um, I think we might actually talk to some youth 
and have some like interview stuff coming soon. So if there's anything that you want to talk about with getting young people involved in the sport, or if you think all those old fogies didn't say the right stuff, now's the time to write it in because we're going to probably come back to this topic. Anything else for the good of the order before I say, do we have a hella sweet or a butt terrible or an on the spot? All right, dude, don't do that. Maybe not. Uh, I think you just gave us a dude, don't do that, of the <laughs> buying that cheapo socket set from the seat Walmart, <laughs> all night Walmart block rack. That's that's the, don't do that, dude. No. <laughs> I have that set in my truck because I bought that stuff in the road. So here is your just the tip for the day. <gasps> Jeff has just a tip. I do have just a tip. Have a road set of tools and a home set of tools and carry that road set of tools. If you have a hoopty, you're going to need to wrench on the road. And if you bought that CVS kit, put it under the seat. Don't just let it sit in the garage. Have the basics with you. Ah, how about that? (laughs) It's it's a good safety tip, Jeff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Tools don't do any good when they're at home. Oh, you're not yeah. you know what my grandfather used to say the only What's useless that? tool is the one you can't lift and he as a diesel mechanic had a couple of those he did he did i think <laughs> what he <laughs> meant was when you get so old you can't lift it then yeah. it's a useless tool say, did we get that, that giant socket wrench from our first lemons race or giant it was a gi- like literally a four foot wrench yeah, uh, we, it comically over. I don't know where we got that. Yeah, they gave yeah, away. It was, it, that Biggest was a, that was our award. bribe on that one. I could pick them up at Fazio's. I I do want to throw this out there. I feel oh, like this I, actually. I'll, I'll go back. Go ahead. I'll it was a short developed show, but it, I feel it's an important show and it's a good show. And if you're a young person listening to this, and you're or you're Josh just claiming no, <laughs> absolutely. Let's talk, and maybe we could have you on the show. And uh, you can you can ask all the questions. We can do it anonymously if you don't want people making fun of you. And uh, you can ask all the questions that people were afraid or you were afraid to ask in, in the regular meat space world. And who knows? You come on this show with a page full of silly questions. You might get your own podcast and actually have eight more episodes than us. Yes. Josh Clayman, if you're listening, you should be watching Money Pit on Donut. And watch JR go because he's building performance cars and watch JR go is flipping cars. So he is getting $500 things off of Craigslist and selling them for 2000. And also uh, watch, uh, watch Porsche road trip with John Bolinick. That's for us who care about Porsches. You know, when we see a 57 Chevy and we go, ugh, boomer car, they see a 911 and go, ugh, boomer car. Watch that you definitely need to watch the show and understand because it's not just about 9 11s, it's uh, it's an interesting bit. I digress again. <laughs> Do we have any Enough. idea what we're talking it's about on. next week? No, uh, we'll figure it out. No, uh, we'll figure it out. Uh, we're, say, when, when, is, when is New Jersey? Aren't are we doing the New Jersey? No, it's that's two weeks. The week after. Two weeks. All right. All right. Uh, I, ideally, I'll, I'll reach out to one of the myriad of fascinating people that want to be guests on our show and we'll schedule something. <laughs> no problem. Well, thank you for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We also hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing, and building because everyone can be a racer, even you. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. It's totally free. Then go to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. Oh, we should have checked our iTunes ratings since we talked about it last week. Even if you hated us, give us five stars and tell us why. If you have any questions, drop an idea, drop a comment on our Facebook page, everyone.racers, or email us at everyone.racers at gmail.com. Or if you're watching on YouTube, put it right down there in the doodly-doo. You can text us at 484-243-0455. Find us on Instagram or Twitter at everyone.racers. Thanks again. And until next week, keep the shiny side up, especially if you're a 17-year-old. Don't flip the car, okay? Keep it safe. We still have a